with hot summer weather outside. This bowl of fresh cold fruit for this Butte County woman. All right. Something as simple as this, a lot for Corey Hendricks to handle these days. This is the Simbacor, this steroid inhaler. The Leva, Levabutrol goes into the nebulizer, and another abuterol. All her life, Hendricks has battled asthma. I've been able to get over, you know, having attacks. You know, if I get a cold, I, I go on a nebulizer treatment and Simbacort and some steroids, and then I'm good. But since the campfire, it's been an ongoing struggle. Would you say the campfire, the pollutants from the campfire and the toxins exacerbated your asthma? Absolutely. Absolutely. On the morning of November 8th, 2018, the campfire roared across the foothills of Butte County, killing more than 80 people and all but destroying the town of Paradise. When did you start noticing a difference? Oh, gosh. Shortly after the fire, I couldn't breathe. You know, trying to get out of town, it was so thick. Hendricks and her family survived, but because of toxic material and smoke from the fire, her lungs will never be the same. Well, I was bike riding down at Bidwell Park all the time, um, just about every day. And, um, you know, like I said, I would struggle with asthma here and there. But since the campfire, I get out of breath doing the littlest things. Nearly three years later, we're now getting a better understanding of what was in the smoke from the campfire, specifically the level of toxins produced from the nearly 19,000 buildings consumed by the fire. Michael Benjamin at the Air Resources Board says his team's analysis shows spikes of metal contaminants. That's a, a public health concern because those fine particles have implications. They have negative effects for people's health in terms of respiratory impacts, um, in terms of premature death, hospital admissions, and so on. Particulates, or PM, tend to be very small, about 3% of the diameter of a single hair. Looking at this graph, data show during the campfire, PM levels increased across much of Northern California by more than 300%. For those people who, let's say, have existing respiratory functions like, um, or issues like asthma, bronchitis, pneumonia, or they're elderly, um, they are more susceptible to these elevated levels of air pollution. Are we talking long-term impact? for those people who were exposed. Yes. We honestly don't know, and that's something that we are going to be working with health investigators and academics and others to understand that better. A specific health concern raised in the report, elevated concentrations of lead and zinc. Lead levels in the city of Chico, 50 times higher than normal, and 10 to 15 times higher in Sacramento and the Bay Area. Lead has um, impacts or effects on the nervous system and on brain development. So it's a real concern, especially for young children. And a real concern, not only for how much is burning, but what is burning. The Air Resources Board looked at air pollution produced by three other major wildfires in 2018. The Car Fire in Shasta County, Mendocino Complex in Mendocino, Lake, Calusa, and Glen Counties, and Ferguson Fire near Yosemite. Although some of them were much larger than the campfire, Benjamin says they didn't burn anywhere near the number of homes and other buildings, so the levels of toxic material were nowhere near as high. Millions of people were exposed to these high levels of particulates. I do want to say, though, that the really high concentrations of metals um, that we saw were really only during a 24-hour period over that two-and-a-half-week time period. Paul Weber lives in paradise. The high levels of toxic material and smoke from the campfire doesn't surprise him. And that's all going up in the air. It's coming down somewhere. Cynthia Smith, who now lives in nearby Yankee Hill, has definite concerns. I just mostly noticed that my kids have allergies um, more than they did before the fire. Um, I know I suffer from allergies, um, but it seems like that it's a lot worse now than it used to be. Which brings us back to Michael Benjamin and a warning for the future. We know it's going to happen. We know we're going to have more wildfires in California. It's not a question of if, but when. So let's do everything we can to prepare ourselves for that.
Well, Benjamin says doing things like creating defensible space around your home so there's no fuel for a wildfire, staying indoors with some clean air, and wearing an N95 mask when there is smoke. One that's marked with NIOSH, which means it has passed inspections and quality control. Doing all of these things can help minimize public health impacts now and in the future. Edie Golston, back to you. And Brittany, you also talked to the mayor of Paradise. What did he tell you? Yeah, so Mayor Steve Crowder, he told me that he also felt the impacts on his respiratory system from the campfire. Yeah. He says he's better now, but for him, it comes down to two things, you guys, when trying to manage wildfires and all of the smoke. He says it comes down to education, which we have been talking right. about, and cleaning out and clearing up all of that fuel. He says he wants the state and federal partners to work together to manage the forestry lands, yeah. to clear out all of that fuel, which he says is contributing to all of the wildfires. To make them so much less damaging. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Brittany, thank you. No problem.